Hello and welcome to part 4 of the basic Python 3 tutorial series. This video is going to be covering variables in Python 3. Very quickly find yourself using variables pretty much in every single program. Variables act as a sort of placeholder for whatever you want to place in them. And variables can be changed, so that is hence the name variable. Another big important use for variables is to not have to hard code data too often. So say you have a, you know, a forum or something like that and you want to print out usernames or show usernames each time someone posts. Instead of hard coding the username each time, say you've got 15 posts, instead of having it you know, hard coded in as in you know, print user number one each time it needs to print out user number one what happens when user number one wants to change their name would it be easier for you to go in and edit your edit the 15 iterations of the string user number one or would it be better if you had a variable called username and you just changed that one variable username and then at all the prints they were just print username well it would be definitely easier just to make that one simple edit and so that's another reason why variables are extremely popular to be used and they're definitely a very important aspect to programming. So let's go ahead and show some examples. So the way you define a variable is very simple. It's just some text. So we can say x var for example var and it can be equal to anything. Let's say it's equal to 100. What we can do then is we can print x var like that. And now we're ready to run this program. So we'll save it and run it and the output is 100, for example, variable 100. Now that's not everything that we can do. We can also do strings in our variables. So we could say instead of 100 as a integer, we could say it's a string, save and run that. Oops, let's print x var, save and run that, 100 again. Now, variables can contain all sorts of things. They can contain integers, floats, strings. You could put in functions in there. You could put in other data structures that we've not even talked about, like uh, lists and dictionaries, all kinds of things. We can also have operations within our variables. So we could do something like this. We could say opvar for operation variable equals and let's change x var to an integer again, so 100. It's going to equal x var divided by 5.3. So this variable equals x variable, so this variable here, divided by 5.3. So what's nice about this is we can already see where we've maybe used x var already twice, right? We want to output x var. And then we also want to go ahead and do some operation with XBAR. So we've already got two iterations of XBAR already, and this is a, an extremely simple program. So as time goes on, you can see how extremely valuable variables can become. So let's go ahead and, well, first let's print this out. So let's print XBAR, and we get our answer, uh, 100 divided by 5.3 is 18.8679 and so on. So here we can do operations as well. So what are the limitations of variables? Well, we can call them just about anything we want, but we cannot start a variable with a number. So we couldn't say one var equals five. We wouldn't be able to do that. It's going to give us invalid syntax. Now, sometimes you might want to have a number in your you know, beginning of a variable. An example I come across sometimes is to say I'm making a moving average for a uh, data set. I want to be able to do 100, M, oops, 100 MA for 100 moving average. I can't do that. But what you can do if you desperately just want that beginning to be a number, you can do an, basically an underline here. So, or underscore, that's what I was looking for. So you can do that, and that's no problem. We can run that, and then later on we can print this. So we can say print, print, underscore 100 MA, save and run it, and we can get away with that as well. So that's going to conclude the variables tutorial. The next video is going to be covering the while loop, so stay tuned for the next chapter. Thanks for watching.